I like it. If you really like it, I really like it. We can help you get it. We're GMAC. We like it. We're GMAC Financing. When it's time for that new family car, GMAC can help you get it. With financing to fit your budget. It's available right here at your GM dealer. Now at participating GM dealers, get low 10.9 financing on new 82 models. We got it! There's a hungry kind of feeling. Oh! And every day it grows. You know there's so much more to you than anybody knows. In the Army, we do more before 9 a.m than most people do all day. Thank you, First Sergeant. Good morning. We need you in the Army. Eric Koble, number 33, knows where that end zone is today. Part one of the triple option, the dive play. He takes it right over his right guard and tackle, Westmoreland and Gregory. Slides to the outside and just really gives it that extra effort to take it on in for the touchdown. That's touchdown number two today for the young freshman, Eric Koble. David White is deep to receive, and Neil Nainhofer, who just added the point after, will be kicking off for the Bobcats. He has that following wind. David White, number 31, drops it, picks it up. Now White is on his way. Hewitt just misses him. He's still dancing around, but not going anywhere, and taken to the ground inside the 15 at about the 14-yard line. So now for the Cal Davis Aggies, first down on their own 14-yard line. Jim Soaker, who got his 100th win this past season, Bob Murphy, he said that was a great thrill for him. He said leading his team to a 10-0 season as a quarterback at San Francisco State back in 1959 was another great experience. He must have been a marvelous college quarterback and played in those days when you played 60 minutes. He was a safety on defense. Passing to the far sideline to Alan Fleming, number 20. Alan Fleming, who has an impressive worksheet today as a receiver, and particularly on this route, the sideline cut, he opened up with this route in the first quarter. Scott Berry throws it a little behind him, but Fleming, with good hand-eye coordination, reaches back, takes the ball, and then slides to the out-of-bounds marker. Alan Fleming has caught six for 69 yards. Just enough for a first down. Ten yards gained on the completed pass. Craig Walsh comes in, replacing Andy Williams as the wide receiver. Rodgers is the tailback. This will be Rodgers. And Rodgers bangs over the 30, runs it to the 34. Good for about eight yards. So 18 yards in the first two plays by the Cal Davis Aggies. Greg Jones, the defensive tackle of Southwest Texas State, brought him down, and we have an Aggie shaken up. Sean Rogers is shaken up, Murph, and I think it's the wind. I think he got the wind knocked out of him. Sean Rogers, let's see if you can see it now from his tailback spot. This has been his big play today. It's the sprint draw off left tackle. He breaks one tackle there, into the secondary he goes, spins around, he gets hit, and here comes a late shot right there. I don't think that's the one that did it, however. I think it's when he caught a little uh, shoulder to his sternum just before that. And I think all that's happened, Bob, is he's, he's had the wind knocked out of him. And sometimes, it, as bad as it looks right now, he may come back up and be fine in a few minutes. However, if it's, a, if it's a rib injury, that would be different. Rogers is such a good one. Well, on Monday night, ABC's Monday night football game will be for the Battle of Texas. It's the Houston Oilers and the Dallas Cowboys, 8 o'clock Central Time. Oh, boy. What a get-together, huh? Do you think it's safe to say that those two teams uh, don't like each other very much? NFL Monday Night Football, a neighborhood brawl, the Cowboys and the Oilers. Second down and two, Fleming is in motion, cuts up field. Oh, strong defensive play for Southwest Texas by Mike Langford. Langford, a captain, and what a hoss. 260 pounds. That man is a hoss and perhaps a fraction. I don't know. He, uh, he is a big one. I thought you'd say a hoss and a half. Well, we could make him a hoss and a half, but I think that maybe uh, the hoss and a half originated right here in Texas. It is third down and a yard to go for the Cal Davis Aggies. Late now in the third quarter, they're down by 17 points. Salem, the tight end, goes in motion. 
The pitch to David White, number 31, 35, 40. Oh, good job by White. He runs for a first down. Billy Hall, the free safety, finally took him out of bounds, but that was a big play for the Cal Davis Aggies. They started on their own 14. The Ags Murph are starting to move the ball with a little bit more balance here in the third quarter, but what has been killing them repeatedly are these turnovers. Absolutely. They've got to get some kind of a drive going, which does not include a turnover. Jim Soaker said they hadn't turned the ball over like this all year long. He must be a frustrated coach right now. Well, of course, they've played all day without their All-American quarterback, Ken O'Brien. But they will have the wind, and it has been a factor all day in the final quarter of the ball game. Scott Berry wants to throw to Dave White, number 31. Now it goes one-on-one, -on -one, and White breaks away and gets almost to midfield. He got almost to midfield. Motion, man. Straight drop back. Barry. That's a good call right there because uh, it gives a little more of that diversity I'm talking about, Murph, to the passing game. Good play there, too, by Greg Jones. Big defensive tackle out of Conroe who came up after the first tackle had been missed and stopped the play at the 49. And now it is second down and two for the Cal Davis Aggies. Now they're working with good field position. The final minute of the third quarter, they soon are going to have the win. Dave White, who has taken over for Sean Rogers as the tailback. Rogers had to go out. White has come in, Lee, and he's doing well. Staskis is such an impressive player for Southwest Texas State. He was the Lone Star Defensive Player of the Year. Look at this. Look at the numbers on him. 11.4 tackles per game. Add to that six interceptions. Nine and a half sacks coming into this game. Those are the stats of Tim Staskis out of Houston, Texas. This is third and five for the Aggies of Cal Davis. Scott Berry fires. It is deflected. It is off the hand and incomplete thrown for Dave White, number 31, and it'll be fourth down. Interesting how Scott Berry has been performing today, Bob. He started out the game with five of six. Then he went 0 for 7. Now, he's gone five for seven again. So he's, he's really a streak passer. Here's Sean Rogers on the sideline. He had to come out. Dave White has taken his place. And it looks to be a shoulder. We're hoping he will be able to come back in the football game. Well, I was wrong. I thought it was his win. A shoulder. Oh, look at the bad serious. snap. Bad snap. Inglesby racing back to pick it up. Throws the ball all the way into the end zone. It rolls out of the end zone to safety. And a penalty flag is on the ground at about the six-yard line. That was thrown so far over the head of the punter. The long snap made by Greg Young way over his head. And let's see what the officials have to say. Had the ball gone completely out of the end zone, it would have been scored as a safety. Might have been a smart play and just throwing that ball out of the end zone and if, taking two instead of six. If they get the safety, it's going to be a smart play. I'm afraid they're going to mark the ball dead where he was down, where he was down with the football. High snap. Watch. This is the key. Very high snap. Pat Inglesby, number 25, goes after the football. You see what's wrong. The ball is going to be marked dead, Murph, where his knee was down there. See, his knee was down, and then he threw it out of the end zone. You're right, and as a result, it's going to put the Cal Davis Aggies in a dreadful spot. And they're going to tack on five more, I think. Look where the ball is going to be on the four-yard line. Let's listen. I don't think Tom Slaymaker's mic is working at the moment. I think they're calling, in addition to that, illegal batting of the ball, Murph. That's exactly what they call illegal batting of the ball on top of his knee being down. So, what I think he intended to make a very smart play, but it didn't turn out that way. And it turned out to be even worse than a turnover, and Cal Davis already had been charged with six turnovers in the football game. Now, Southwest Texas State will have a first down and goal to go as we come to the end of the third quarter. Clock actually at the moment shows one second remaining. And the referee Slaymaker is talking this one out with the Cal Davis coach, Jim Soaker. Soaker wanting to know why they are going to give it right on the four yard line, first down and goal to go. 
Well, playing without their regular All-American quarterback, Ken O'Brien, a lot of responsibility for the sophomore, Scott Berry, who certainly has held up well all afternoon. That's a good point. For people who are joining us late and didn't hear what we had to say at the top of the show, uh, Ken O'Brien really has been the story of the Cal Davis season. More to come on that. Sanders and Coble are the setbacks. First down, three yards and goal to go. That's Sanders. Ricky Sanders uh, to about the one-yard line. So Sanders to the one-yard line. That is the end of the third quarter. So we'll be going to the fourth and final quarter, a 17-point lead for Southwest Texas State. They're in front 20 to 3. We'll be right back. It's starring Esther, your time's expired. Actually, Thelma, so has yours. And I'm I put our family. A house always take a cliff. But you've got prudential life insurance. Oh yeah, my piece of the rock. Nothing gives you peace of mind like a piece of the rock. For your peace of mind, call a Prudential agent and... Get a piece of the rock. Are you sure I can't buy a little more time? Sorry, Thelma. Sorry, Thelma. Prudential insurance. Betigo Creek, Louisiana, and Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Betigo Creek means bass, fat and tasty. And Milwaukee means beer, cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer, and the smooth golden light taste of old Milwaukee light. Old Milwaukee. And old Milwaukee light. Tastes as great as their name. Let me tell you, it doesn't get any better than this. Credit card fraud. You could be a victim. Monday, watch ABC's World News tonight. Love boat in the morning and love in the afternoon. Join us weekdays on ABC. This small, unassuming device is, in fact, a major advance in communications. It's the new MCI Executive Pager. It tells you not just the telephone number that called, but who called. It can receive stock quotes, prices, sales figures, even store messages. And it can do it silently. The new Executive Pager from MCI. The greatest tool for business since the telephone. So call us before your competition does. Buying gasoline on a credit card can be confusing these days. Some stations have one price for cash, another price for credit. Well, Shell has one price for both, and we want your credit card business. So right now, you can use our competitors' cards, any oil company credit card, at Shell. And when you do, I'll send in for a Shell card in your name. Shell, where you pay the same price, cash or credit card. Discrimination on any basis is not just unfair, it's illegal. We go to the fourth quarter here at Memorial Stadium in McAllen, Texas. The game of the year in Division II of college football, the game for the national championship, a game that has haunted the Cal Davis Aggies from a standpoint of turnovers. Maybe you should call the last one a semi-turnover. A high center step. <laughs> This is second down, inches to go, and the quarterback, Jacoby, trying to score on a quarterback sneak. They pile him up. It looks like the nose of the football is right at the goal line. He may not have dented the plane. If not, it'll be third down and an inch to go. Right. 20 to 3. The Bobcats have a 17-point lead, and they are trying once again to cash in on a big opportunity. Look where the nose of the football is. That would be a true goal line stand if they can stop this, Murph. Looks like an impossible task. Sanders, number 10, and Sanders scores the touchdown. So Ricky Sanders takes it in those last few inches. And now it is 26 to 3. And Neil Neinhofer will be trying for his third point after. Eric Koble has scored twice, Dale Posey once, and now Ricky Sanders has scored for Sanders, his eighth touchdown of the year. Right over that same slot, though, the right guard and the right tackle, Westmoreland, Gregorick. They've been running there effectively all afternoon. That's part one of the triple option, and that's what they live with. Here's the kick by Neinhofer. A lot of leg goes into it. It is good, and so it is 27-3. to Southwest, Southwest Texas State now with a commanding lead. We'll be coming right back. The world's fastest trains are France's Très Grande Vitesse, which is French for very great speed. They set a world record at 238 miles an hour. What keeps them from shaking up the passengers or shaking off the tracks? 
Kone shock absorbers made by the people of ITT. The ITT shocks smooth out the ride and help keep it safe. That's important because when you're going très grande vitesse, you want très grande security. We are USA One, taking charge with celebrity. No import sedan at any price can match this Chevrolet for the room it gives you with the mileage it gives you. And Chevrolet now brings it to you at new lower prices. The five-passenger front-wheel drive celebrity with standard engine electronic fuel injection. Chevrolet's new generation sedan. And now on new 82 models only, get 10.9% financing that can save you hundreds of dollars on financing costs. Eight universities in Texas hold membership in the Lone Star Conference. The LSC has produced numerous national champions, including 1981 NCAA Division II football champion, Southwest Texas State University. Watch the quickness of number 10 running back Ricky Sanders and the surge once again of the Bobcat offensive wall along that right side, particularly Westmoreland and Gregory. Number 31, David White, deep to receive the kickoff. Kick is coming up short and is going to be grabbed for Cal Davis by Dave Schmidt, number 89, a tight end. He was up short at about the 30-yard line where he takes the kickoff. Murph, as we look at those third-quarter stats, you know what really keeps coming up is the total yards there and particularly the rushing yards by the Bobcats. Now, you pointed it out earlier. This is against a very strong... Uh, defensive team of UC Davis. They have really been able to put together almost a textbook game plan because they're controlling the football on the ground with option plays. Well, Cal Davis now with the following wind and they need a furious aerial game to get back into the football game. Scott Berry throws in under for David White and one of the officials screened him off. <laughs> That's a zebra screen there. What? That's what you know you're having a bad day. Now watch, this is one of the most interesting plays of the year because look what happened. He's trying to throw to his back right here, number 31. That's Dave White. And the ball, the ball hit the zebra. It's in play. Just one of those pieces of bad luck. Second down and 10 as we keep an eye on the sophomore quarterback, Scott Berry out of Walnut Grove, California. Now Berry. Throws, nice grab by number 40, Randy Williams, the sophomore split in. That was well thrown and well received, and it goes for a first down to the 47, Lee. That's a perfect timing pass. Randy Williams, number 40, is the wide receiver on the left. He's running a quick post pattern. It's about a five-step drop and then throw. Right there, and that ball is literally thrown right on the numbers. You can see why Randy Williams has over 550 receiving yards this year. Now Craig Walsh comes in, and Randy comes to the sideline. First and 10, Cal Davis. Scott Berry has to hurry, throws, and it is completed nicely across the way to Alan Fleming, who's had the biggest day of all the Cal Davis Aggies when it comes to grabbing the aerials as we check in on Jim Soaker. He's sending in the play. They're going to be throwing almost every down now. They just have to. They are behind 27 to 3. They have a first down on the 40-yard line. Randy Williams back in. Craig Walsh comes out as they bring the plays in from Coach Zim, Jim Soaker. First down on the Bobcat 40. And we watch Barry. Throwing, trying to get it. It is incomplete. They throw a flag. They throw a flag on number 16, Adrian Simpson, for pass interference. It'll be first down and goal. Simpson has been called for pass interference. Boy, well, that's that close. That kind of counteracts the play in the third quarter when Fleming dropped a sure touchdown pass. Simpson and Williams along the sideline. They both have a right to the football if it is a catchable ball. Now, interference is always a controversial call. The official is right there. He says that Williams number 40 was interfered with. That's not an easy call to make. Tough to make. call. 68 yards in penalties against Southwest Texas State. Now first and goal for the Cal Davis Aggies. 
Hawkins is the up back in the eye, and Dave White, the tailback, taking over for Rodgers. This is White, number 31. He will score. Dave White goes in for the touchdown. Number 31, Dave White from a yard out. Good work on the part of offensive guard John Johnson. And so the Aggies have their first touchdown of the afternoon. We might get a football game yet. They came back furiously to get that one. That is the advantage of having an explosive wide open passing attack is because in the fourth quarter when you're down by say two or three touchdowns you can really catch up in a hurry. They are now in the posture of playing catch up football and as Bob Murphy pointed out they will be throwing on almost look at this Murph. They're going for two. They go for two but it's batted away by the same Adrian Simpson the cornerback number 16 who was flagged for pass interference just a moment ago. But the Aggies have their first touchdown. They're trailing 27 to 9. We're in the fourth quarter and coming right back. When a business grows, it often grows out of control. Simple procedures become gigantic problems. Things like billing, filing, and shipping become too big to handle the old way. Why not get one of IBM's low-cost small computers like Datamaster? It puts you back in control, and it can grow. Here's to a great future. As your business grows. That's surprising, Mr. Goodwrench. You mean a wheel alignment could really save me gas? Sure can, as much as a gallon a tank full. A gallon? Right. Your GM owner's manual recommends periodic checks. If your wheels need aligning, we can bring them back to GM factory specs in just a few minutes. A gallon a tank full. And we'll check your shocks and brakes, too, just to be sure you're rolling easy. Keep that great GM feeling. And save a gallon of gas. With genuine GM parts. Bazooka Limon and Bobby Chacon have clashed three times. This fight is for the super featherweight title. ABC's Wide World of Sports, Saturday, live. Murph out of the I formation. The motion is to the right. The pitch to the tailback is back to the left. Dave White, number 31, who is filling in now for number 44, Sean Rogers, finds the crack there and simply bolts to the end zone. The two-point play. Fake by number 25, Pat Inglesby. And the incomplete pass. And on the kickoff with the wind at their back, Tom Beck easily kicks the ball well into the end zone. And now Southwest Texas State will have first and 10 on their own 20. They have a 16 point lead, 27 to 9. We still have a lot of playing time 13 minutes and 15 seconds. Cal Davis went 70 yards in only four plays. One of the four plays was a big pass interference call that resulted in about 40 of the 70. A controversial call, as so many of them have been this year, Bob Murphy. And now the Bobcats would like to use that crunching ground game, which has been so effective all day long, to consume a lot of time. On the running play, Ricky Sanders. Short game for Ricky Sanders. This is an important time in the game for the Aggies. Right now, their defensive unit has got to fire up and get the football back so that their offense can get moving again. They have the win, and Scott Berry once again is on a streak. Second down and nine for the Bobcats. They have about 230 rushing yards already in this afternoon's ball game. Jacoby on the option. Jacoby now gets rid of it at the last moment or tries to get rid of it. And this will wind up just about at the line of scrimmage. I Kind of lost sight across the way. That is really kind of the definitive example of stringing out the option play. That is exactly what they like to do. They literally strung that one out all the way to the sideline. Now you're talking about a defensive unit that has only been allowing 79 yards a game rushing. Today they've given up 230. And this is third and four for Southwest Texas State. Coble, the freshman running back. Breaks it for a first down and a yard more as he crosses the 30 and gets to the 31-yard line. And Eric Coble has really been a standout of this football game today, along with Ricky Sanders. Coble has really been a surprise for them. He has come on strong in his freshman year, and he's been showing the type of running instincts that they like in that beer option attack. 
He'll be a man to think about, Cupper, later on when we start thinking in terms of the most valuable players. Yep, exactly. I was thinking, you must be reading my mind. Not easy to do. <laughs> First down play, Ricky Sanders. Very short gain of about a yard, and then he is piled up. Paul Emery, the middle linebacker, he's been there all the way. And Loyal Miner has played a lot of football for Cal Davis, as well as Ernie Bell. Look at that. Well, you mentioned it. I'm going to amplify here, Murph. Well, we will be giving a Most Valuable Player award uh, on behalf of Chevrolet. And uh, the, the Chevy player has been going on for a long time now. $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund in the name of the Most Valuable Player. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Jacoby will throw far downfield. It is incomplete. Incomplete at the 40-yard line. Beyond the reach of David Vela, number 25, the speedy split end out of San Antonio. David Vela, according to Jim Wacker, is the finest receiver he has ever coached. He's running his favorite route, which has been a post pattern. And what Jacoby didn't do there is take a little something off the ball. He drilled it when he should have touched it. Beautiful effort on the part of David Vela. He went hurtling through the air and almost timed it out. This is third and nine for the Bobcats. Coble across the 35, not a first down, up to about the 38. The freshman running back from Austin, Eric Coble, gets to the 38-yard line, and now Southwest Texas State will be punting the ball to the Cal Davis Aggies. Now, cover if the Aggies can come downfield and get another one, then we could have quite a finish. Suddenly, we've got a football game again. This is what everybody thought we would have. Turnovers have really kept the Aggies from keeping it close. Jerry Fife, the freshman punter, will be kicking for the sixth time this afternoon. And this one, he hits high and into the wind, does a pretty good job with it. It's out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. So a 34-yard punt. Cal Davis will have a first down on their own 28-yard line. 10:51 left of the championship football game. We'll be right back. Panasonic introduces our smallest, lightest VHS video recorder. When linked to this Panasonic video camera, this system responds as quickly as the action unfolds, focusing automatically, adjusting to changing light instantly. It even works in low light. And with a special Panasonic tape, it records eight hours of TV. Eight hours. Panasonic Omnivision. No other portable VHS system does more. It's amazing what Panasonic did to Regivision. Omnivision. Joan, where can I find a good stereo for the office? I'll find out. Save time and energy. The Bell System Yellow Pages talks when you let your fingers do the walking. Ava, complete line of office supplies. Sam Stereo. Doctor? Sam Stereo. Sensational sounds abound. That's remarkable. No, it's sensational. I'm Sam. Get the Yellow Pages talking. Sensational. Let your fingers do the walking. We're looking at Jim Soaker, the very successful coach at Cal Davis. Cal Davis, a school that does not give football scholarships, student athletes. They come to school for an education. They also love to play football. Exactly. We use that term student athletes a lot. It's almost become a cliche, but these guys are really the embodiment of the student athlete. Cal Davis from his own 28-yard line, first and 10, the sophomore quarterback, Scott Berry, look out. Here they come, and the sack is underway. Bailiff is number 81, and Rod Clark is number 86. They came from the opposite ends. First came Mike Bailiff, then came Rod Clark. They converged, and down he went. This is a quarterback's nightmare. You better learn to read the blitz, because here it comes. And here comes the front four. Here comes the blitz. There's Bailiff. There's Clark. There's Langford. There's Joseph. Oh, boy. How about that for sex? That doesn't count postseason play. They're now up to about 65 or 66. That's right. Oh, long loss of 13, second down and 23. That got Scott Berry's attention. But he's ready to try and go at him again. Oh, he gets it. He escapes. Tries to find a receiver. Throws back toward the middle. It's incomplete. Incomplete. He was trying to hit Mike Barber, who's only five foot seven and 153 pounds. Talk about student athletes. Boy, that's a brave student. One thing I noticed about that, Murph, is that uh, Tech, Southwest Texas State is doing a good job of mixing up their defenses. They had come with a blitz on the previous play. That time they went to a three-man rush, and the coverage was very effective in the secondary. 
Defensive end Mike Bailiff, who was in on the sack just a moment ago, is being cared for on the field at the moment. 9.59 to play in this championship game. Well, later today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, it'll be fun to watch the WBC World Super Featherweight Championship bout live from Sacramento, California. Between the WBC World Super Featherweight Champion Rafael Bazooka Limon and the rival Bobby Chacon. They've already fought three times, each fighter winning one, the other was a draw. And the WBC World Super Bantamweight Championship between the champion Wilfredo Gomez and the WBC Bantamweight Champion Lupe Pintor. And a special report on Tamara McKinney and her victory in the World Cup Chalom next ski race in Limon Tiamante, Italy yesterday. That was exciting. And that's all on ABC's Wide World of Sports, 4 o'clock Central and 2 o'clock Pacific. Third and 23, Cal Davis. From their own 15, Scott Berry. A little more time, throwing long. Oh, Billy Hall, number eight of the Bobcats, almost had the intercept. Racing, hoping to catch it, was Alan Fleming. Oh, they hit. Neither a very big man, Lee Grosskamp, but they really hit hard. Fleming running his favorite route, which has been a deep post pattern. He takes the inside release inside the cornerback, bursts upfield, now cuts it back to the inside. And there's Hall, number eight, stepping over there. You talk about a collision. Woo boy. Woo boy is right. They did hit hard. Pat Inglesby will make his fourth punt of the day. The last time he tried to punt, the snap went way over his head. He hits this one nicely. Vaughn Deary, number two, and knife down the moment he makes the catch. What a play that was by Bill Thomas, number 37, a sophomore out of Fremont, California. It was a 39-yard punt with the win. This year's Sugar Bowl we have for you on ABC. What a football game. The number one, Georgia Bulldogs, and Herschel Walker, the winner of the Heisman Trophy. He's the biggest dog of them all. He can really do it. Marvelous football player, Penn State and Georgia on ABC on New Year's night. The winner of that game probably will be the national champion. Eric Koble, the freshman running back, up to near midfield where he stopped. You know, Murph, that might be one of the great tailback matchups in NCAA history when you talk about Kurt Warner going against Herschel Walker. And Todd Blackledge, the Penn State quarterback, such an outstanding football player. I think player. he might be the key to that football game. I do, too. Second down and six for Southwest Texas. They have a 27 to nine lead. We're in the fourth quarter. Jacoby can't turn the corner. Oh, he does flip it at the last moment to Ricky Sanders while he was being hit by middle linebacker Paul Emery, number 46. Cover, you've been talking from time to time about how they string that thing out and don't flip it until the last moment. Jacoby did a good job of reading that that time because there just wasn't anything there for him and he took it all the way to the corner saw that he wasn't going to get anything, was able to get a couple extra yards with a quick flip to Sanders. David Burnson tells us now the rushing figure, Southwest Texas, 255 yards, and Cal Davis only 11. That is in rushing. This is third down and two for the Bobcats. Jacoby running for the first down and out of bounds on the 40, but he has a first and 10. Cornerback Rodney Rogel from Los Angeles, California, chased him out. You know, Murph, all of this beer business started with Bill Yeoman at Houston back in the mid-60s. Jim Wacker was influenced by that. He said when he first saw it drawn up, he thought that, that Yeoman was crazy. He said there's no way that that can possibly work. Then he saw it on film, and he said, holy cow, they're going up and down the field. And so he really became an advocate of the beer, and he's used it ever since. Bill Yeoman, who's been the head coach of the Houston Cougars for better than 20 years and has turned out so many great football teams. Yes, an innovative man in college football. This is a first down play, and Ricky Sanders fighting for what he can get. Not very much, maybe about a yard this time. Bob Slater, defensive captain for Cal Davis. Slater is a really an outstanding football player. On defense, the conference player of the year of that Northern California Atlantic Conference. Murph, I said this at halftime, but I'll say it again. No team in the history of these Division II championships 
has put together two straight championship seasons. It's looking good for the Bobcats right now. Jacoby, the quarterback. Oh, runs past the 30 and down to about the 27. 13 yards and a first and 10 on the 27-yard line. Number 53 getting up now is Loyal Miner, the linebacker who got him. This is vintage Jacoby right here. Part two of the triple option. You saw the dive fake. Now he looks outside and sees that that's covered. He turns it up the lane, goes upfield, gets enough for the first down, then goes into his hook slide. All of the All right. backs are doing so well, Lee. Coble has 82 yards. Ricky Sanders has 80. Gaskin had 46, then he was hurt. This is Coble, number 33, the freshman running back. Teddy Steele, 34 yards, and Jacoby has 28. So everybody being used by Jim Wacker today doing very well with the rushing game. Talk about a lopsided rushing stat, and what a story. That really defines it for you right there. 267 to 11, and again, Murph, against a team who had only been yielding 79 yards per game. The Texans with a 16-point lead. This is second down and nine. Woolley was the man in motion. And this will be Ricky Sanders. Ricky Sanders, the junior running back. He's coming back for another year. He's out of Belton, Texas. And he's the number one running back on the field. He came into this game with almost 1,100 yards rushing. This is uh, exactly the type of game plan. It's really a textbook game plan for Jim Wacker. I said it before, the veer when it works for you can be awesome. It is not necessarily a good come from behind. You see the distance, Murph. It's not necessarily a good come from behind offense, but oh, is it awesome when you want to control that football and it's working for you. Coaches will tell you that you have to have your patience. If you fall behind, you still got to stay with your game plan, go with the things that have been good for you all year long and not panic, not really start throwing it until late in the game when you know you have to. So third and one, that was just shy on the measurement as we watch Willie go in motion. Oh, Jacoby and Teddy Steele, he gave that ball to Steele. Finally, it looked like he was just trying to make up his mind whether to let him have it or not. And that'll be a first down. Chris Mason is number 85 playing a defensive end, a senior out of Alamo, California, who made the stop. And another first and 10 for the Bobcats. Well, I said it before, Merv, it takes a special kind of athlete at that quarterback position because you have to do so many things almost instantaneously. And it's, it's a high-risk offense right at the line of scrimmage. He has those instincts. He's been a, a leader and a winner all year long. Jacoby pitching to Sanders. Sanders at the five. Ricky Sanders with his second touchdown of the afternoon. Ricky Sanders scoring for the second time today and his ninth touchdown of the year as he runs it in on the pitch from Jacoby. Watch this read. Now, this is just absolutely perfect. Carr coming in from the cornerback position takes himself out of the play, and Sanders just turns that corner and zips into the end zone. 24 carries for 102 yards and two touchdowns for this sensational player, Ricky Sanders. And now it is 33 to 9, and Nainhofer will try for his fourth point after touchdown. Coble has scored twice, Sanders has scored twice, Posey has scored once. The kick is up, and the kick is good by Nienhofer. And the Bobcats are well on their way to being the only team ever to win the championship back-to-back. -back. The only team ever to win it twice. We'll be back to follow it up in a moment. I wasn't drafted till the seventh round. like it. Budweiser Light. The best. Kroder, huh? You found it in yourself and now you found it in the beer you drink. Budweiser 
this year, there will be no doubt. Number one, Georgia. Number two, Penn State. The game for the national championship. The Sugar Bowl, New Year's Night on ABC. Murph, at the top of your screen, number 21, Gar, comes in here to rush. And what Jacoby does is read it, pitches to Sanders, the trailing back, and then there's nobody home on the corner. So all he has to do is burst to the end zone. And Sanders now, as I pointed out, has 24 carries for 102 yards, two touchdowns. He is the leading rusher in the game now and was the leading rusher on the season with 1,074 yards coming into today's game. And you have to admire the quarterback work, too, of Ron Jacoby. This is Dave White, number 31 of the Cal Davis Aggies. White to the 25. He will be taken down at that point by Teddy Steele, number 42. The Bobcats are on their way to making history. No team since uh, the inception of this format in 1973 has had back-to-back -back championships. The Bobcats now with a 25-point lead and six minutes and 18 seconds to go. And Jim Wacker and his coaching staff are going to go out in a blaze of glory. This is their final game with Southwest Texas State. John O'Hara comes in from Baylor to take over. And Jim Wacker and his staff all go to Fort Worth to take over the football program at Texas Christian University. Wacker says he has loved it at Southwest Texas State. It has been a marvelous school. Fleming on the receiving end. Fleming dancing the sideline. Fleming now downed on the 46-yard line. Nifty work by Allen Fleming. He is an exciting receiver. It was Brad Arnold, number 35, who finally stopped him. 21 yards on the pass completion, first and 10 from the Gain point. of about 22 yards on the play and a first down. No choice now for the Cal Davis Aggies other than to try and go to the air and get on the board. 13 out of 27 for the sophomore Scott Berry, 166 yards, two intercepts. Turnover, costly to Cal Davis today. They've turned it over six times. Scott Berry for the tight end, Bill Wooler, but it is incomplete. Here's an interesting uh, note right here. Every rusher for Southwest Texas State has at least tripled the rushing yards of UC Davis. That has been the story of the game today. They have dominated with their running attack. That split back beer when it works can be tremendous. It, it, it can just be awesome to watch. 303 total yards now for the Bobcats to 11 yards for the Aggies. And the Bobcats adjusted beautifully on defense. In the very first quarter, Cal Davis was doing very well passing against the Bobcats, but they made their adjustments. And this is incomplete. Oh! What a hit. Scott Berry, nevertheless, showing a lot of poise today, Murph, because as you have pointed out throughout the telecast, he is stepping into a situation uh, which is really unique in the history of, of championship games in Division II. A great quarterback like Ken O'Brien, who has had a magnificent season, one of the great passers in the history of Division II, never been injured in his entire career, went down last week with an ankle and fibula injury, and that set the stage for Scott Berry to take over in this finale. And under the circumstances, I think he's had a good afternoon. Indeed he has. Roland Altinger normally comes in on those goal line stands, playing now. He made that hard hit. And now, quick move it here. Altinger, number 91, a six-footer, 220 pounds, did great work in a valiant goal line stand a week ago. And it was Altinger who pointed the finger and said, hey, they lured us off, and he was right. Goal line stands, you said it before. Goal line stands are what got them here. Two 19-14 football games. Jim Wacker giving his reserves a chance to enjoy this pound bowl game now with his team in front by 25 points and less than six minutes of the football game remaining. Walter, number 14, wants to throw, I believe. Nope. He's going to have trouble getting back to the line of scrimmage and will go down on the 45-yard line. Dan Gillespie, number 47, makes the tackle across the way. And the Bobcat Reserves League Gross Cup, who are now getting a chance to play, they are really fired high. They're loving it. You do when you're a guy who doesn't play much during the season and suddenly you find yourself in a championship game. You got to be fired up. That was a cute little gadget play that the Aggies tried to edu uh, execute right there. Wohler has been a quarterback. Here's Ken O'Brien on the sidelines. 
you have to wonder how close this game would be if this All-American quarterback had been healthy and able to play. He started all 17 games of the Cal Davis winning streak. 17-game winning streak that looks like it's about to come yeah. to an end. 6,700 career yards. One of the greatest in Division II history. And he is an All-American. Back with the remainder of this championship football game in just a moment. Who makes the best-selling radials in America? Goodyear. We outsell all foreign radials combined. One reason, the Goodyear Arriva. It gives you long tread life. And best of all, all-season traction in the wet stuff and the white stuff. The Goodyear all-season Arriva. It's one reason Goodyear is the leader in radials. No foreign maker of radials even comes close. When you need radials, come up to Goodyear. I like it. I really like it. We can help you get it. We're GMAC. We want it. GMAC financing. If you want that new GM car truck, GMAC offers the convenience of one-stop shopping with rates that make good sense. Right here at your GM dealer. Now at participating GM dealers, get low 10.9 financing on new 82 models. We got it. Southwest Texas State trying to win game number 17 in a row. It would mean back-to-back -back Division II national titles. It would bring to an end the Cal Davis winning streak, which had reached 17. Means the Bobcats would make history because there have, there's never been a repeater since this format got started in 1973. From their 44, Cal Davis. Scott Berry. Throws toward the sideline, way over the head of Allen Fleming. And it is incomplete, and that was a fourth down pass, and the ball will go over now to the Bobcats. Allen Fleming, though playing on a team that is losing in this ball game this afternoon, he may have had the one touchdown pass that got away, but otherwise he's had a good day. He has had a sensational afternoon. We're going to be getting his stats here momentarily, but it, I think it's going to be one of the great single-game performances in the history of these championship games. He is a game-breaker type receiver, was on the receiving end of a 91-yard scoring play very recently. This is first and 10. Southwest Texas has Vaughn Deary, number two, go in motion. And now quarterbacking is David Longhofer. He comes in for the first time. Longhofer comes in at quarterback for the Bobcats. Check these scores out, Lee. Delaware leading Louise. Oh, it's all over. Delaware all has over. beaten Louisiana Tech 17 to nothing in Ruston, Louisiana in a semifinal 1-AA game. The Blue Hens did it! The Blue Hens of Tubby Raymond and East Kentucky leads Tennessee State 13 to 7. That one is in the fourth quarter. The Colonels are rolling on. And They're the defending champs. And next week they play for the championship. David Sorrell, number six, the ball carrier for Southwest Texas State. And Sorrell is taken out of bounds by Rodney Rogel, the right cornerback. Rogel playing well on defense. Time remaining, four minutes and 11 seconds. A 25-point lead for the Bobcats of Coach Jim Wacker. They are up by a score of 34 to 9. Both teams are returning home tonight. Both teams came here by Charter Airlines, and at the time they arrived, Lee, the weather was not good by any means. They had a little trouble getting here. As I said at the very top of the show, both experienced flight delays uh, in getting here because of, of the, uh, the crazy weather we've been having here in southwest Texas the past week. David Longhofer, a freshman quarterback, number 15, and he's from the Rio Grande Valley area. He's from Harlington. It'll be fourth down. Fourth down and about three yards to go now for the Bobcats. We're down to 3.54 to play. Longhofer, that uh, young freshman, the heir apparent to this, uh, this Veer attack. And if he can do as well as Jacoby and Miller in the past, he's going to be something. Well, the halftime score was 13 to 3, so it's been a very good second half for Southwest Texas. Longhofer. Again, runs the option play, runs the football, and it looks like he runs for enough for a first down. Bob Slater makes the stop, but Longhofer does get a first and ten. He's got the size you like in a quarterback. He's 6'1", 194, and he looks real quick on his feet, Murph. 
This program is being brought to you as an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. KLVR TV, Stockton, Sacramento. First down play coming up for the Bobcats. Derry, number two, comes in motion toward the near sideline. Longhofer handling it off to Teddy Steele down to about the 25-yard line. Doesn't seem to matter who they have in there, does it? They just keep coming at you with that veer. They've all done well. Steele was stopped by Jim Noonan. Noonan number 32, but he ran it for about eight yards, and it's second and two. Their, their rushing totals are awesome in this football game. Third and two, Longhofer is the quarterback. He is a freshman. Longhofer to Steele, and Teddy Steele goes for a first down to the 20-yard line. Loyal Miner, number 53, will make the tackle. And we invite you to be stay tuned for part two of the American Bandstand coming up next on most of these stations, except on the West Coast. American Bandstand, part two, coming up. First and 10 for Southwest Texas. They're on their way to their second straight national championship in Division II. The quarterbacking job has been turned over to the freshman quarterback, Longhofer. And he's having a little problem here. Dropped about a yard behind the line by linebacker Ernie Bell. Rained quite a bit the last couple of days in the lower Rio Grande Valley, but happily today we've played through the entire football game, Lee Gross Cup, without any rain at all. No rain, good field, just a pretty good, uh, strong, gusting wind out of the north. The Texans with a 34-9 lead over the Californians and two minutes away from a national championship. Longhofer, number 15, the freshman quarterback, and again it's number 54, Ernie Bell and Paul Emery, the middle linebacker. Not easy to pick out the outstanding player of the game for each team for Chevrolet here this afternoon. Particularly, I would say, for Southwest Texas State Southwest where everybody's Texas. done so well. Everyone has, has really done well, particularly in the offensive backfield, and that's usually as a result of those, those guys who are down in the trenches. That's right, that offensive line. That offensive line, exactly. And Jim Wacker has to feel good about this one, his final game at Southwest Texas State. These two coaches, Jim Wacker and Jim Soaker, the winningest coaches, in Division II of college football. We have a minute 16 left of this championship football game, a 25-point lead for the Texans. We'll be right back. Some Chevy trucks are taking charge with the all-new S10 Blazer, available with a revolutionary Instatrack four-wheel drive system. Shift from freewheeling two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive high and back at any speed. S10 Blazer, from America's truck sales leader. Top Chevy trucks are taking charge. And now on new 82 models only, get 10.9% financing that can save you hundreds of dollars on financing costs. Burlington Fabrics weave their way through your life every day in surfboards, in skis. Fabrics for new soft luggage. Fabrics for the great outdoor life. All made better by Burlington. Fabrics for hang gliding and sailing. Fabrics that make tires stronger. Even fabrics for far away journeys. All made better by Burlington. Time remaining here in McAllen, Texas, a minute and 16 seconds. The Bobcats only that far away from repeating as national champions. They have a 25 point lead. The freshman quarterback, Longhofer, can't get this one away. Number 32 is Jim Noonan, and he is right there along with Captain Bob Slater. And now to Mr. Lee Gross Cup and the selection of our most valuable players. Well, for Cal Davis, it's Alan Fleming, who had eight receptions for 102 yards. And for Southwest Texas State, Ricky Sanders, who had 102 yards in 24 carries. Now, a check in the amount of $1,000 will be noted, de donated by Chevrolet to each school's general scholarship fund to further assist students in all chosen fields of academic endeavors. So, $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund in the name of the player to these young men who were, I think it's a pretty clear choice, Murph. They were outstanding this afternoon, but 
As you said, for Southwest Texas State, so many people were excellent today that it's really hard to pick one guy. They have run the beer just perfectly for head coach Jim Wacker as Jim Wacker and his staff go out of here repeating as national champions as we look at Alan Fleming, the exciting game-breaking type receiver. Seven catches, 82 yards for Alan Fleming. He had 53 catches for 884 yards coming into today's game, and that included 11 touchdowns. One minute and one second of the action remains. Longhofer throws, and it is incomplete. Intended for Chip Hinkle, number 84, the tight end. Paul Emery, who's been doing so much good work on defense, broke it up. Rushing totals, we talked about the beer being awesome for Southwest Texas State. Their advantage in rushing 322 yards to just 13 for Cal Davis. But bear in mind, Cal Davis has been winning with their passing game all year long. And today they had to play this game without one of the very best, their All-American quarterback, Ken O'Brien. And turnovers, a big factor. The Aggies turned it over six times, the Texans only once. So now Cal Davis with the football and only a minute left to play. Barry will throw. Oh, it is incomplete out of the hands of number 40, Randy Williams, the split in. Lee Groves Cup, we've enjoyed being here in the lower Rio Grande Valley. Had a nice visit in Reynosa, Mexico yesterday <laughs> afternoon. Boy, that's one of the biggest, best traffic jams I've ever been in. One of the, the traffic jams of all time. It was a slice of heaven working with you again, Murph. Happy holidays to you and, and everyone. And, uh, and the same to you, Lee. And hope to our, see you again. Our thanks to all of the crew. 25-point lead for Southwest Texas State. Scott Berry will throw toward the near side. Oh, David White made the catch. And then White was almost whacked in two by Billy Booker, number 26, and Stanley Button, number 31, of the Bobcats. That was a greeting. Speaking of holiday greetings, <laughs> that's not the kind you like to get. These are the men that, for the most part, are coming back next year. Their final taste of action. Scott Berry will roll and Berry will throw. And at number 20 is Alan Fleming. Tried to do a little dance step and get away, but couldn't quite pull it off. So we're down to 14 seconds. That was his ninth recap. Fleming, our Chevrolet most valuable player for the Aggies of Cal Davis. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, and the championship crown belongs to the Bobcats of Southwest Texas State. This is the last play of the football game. It is gathered in by Craig Walsh, number 16, and the football game is over. So the final score, Southwest Texas State 34, Cal Davis 9, for the first time in the championship series that began back in 73, we have a repeat winner. The Texans won it last year. There is Jim Wacker, the winning head coach, and his team has won again this year. That has to be quite a feeling, Lee Gross Cup. What a great way to close out a Division II career right there. Jim Wacker moving on to TCU. So the celebration will take place in midfield. Jim Soaker meeting with Jim Wacker, two marvelous young head coaches, the two winningest coaches in all of Division II's college football, and there are 124 teams. These were the final two, and the Bobcats of Southwest Texas State win it by a score of 34 to 9. Travel arrangements.